She's a computer science graduate who's spent the past two years of her life equipping women and youth groups with the necessary skills it requires to take part in the tech revolution. It's all about digitize her as we live out loud with Waidera Kuneni next. Hello and welcome to Sheila Lives Out Loud. My name is Sheila Monyaga and I'm so glad you found this channel. While you're here, click subscribe and watch this video right to the end. If you see something that means something and you think it needs to be shared, please go ahead, share it, share it and tell a friend about it. And while you're still here, hit notifications so that way you never get to miss out on episodes when we upload. And we do that every Monday, so go on subscribe and hit notifications and we are at the waterfront Karen a world-class destination for retail and lifestyle if you're looking for a great day out with family and friends this is the place to experience it maybe perhaps your business is a little more serious and you're looking to set up shop or maybe expand your operations this my friend is where you should be the waterfront Karen you've arrived and joining me for a conversation on all things tech is Waidera Kunene. Thank you for making the time to be here and we're going to talk about Digitize Her. It's an initiative that you're 100% behind mm -hmm. and when I read about it I couldn't help but sing and dance in the house. You sent me an email and I thought you know what season six we're going to sit with Waidera because there's something she needs to put on the table. Yeah. So before we talk about Digitize Her Let's talk about your journey in this digital plane. Where mm -hmm. are you from? Who you be? Uh, my name is Wedera, as you've said. I studied computer science uh, at Ijaton University. I graduated in 2015. Uh, after graduating, I didn't know where to start. So I joined a company where I studied software development. So I used to go to iHub code throughout the night, sometimes trans night, learning how to code in Python. And I can see the skills that I learned. Right now, I'm transferring them to other people. Uh, I attended PyCon just yesterday, where I was teaching girls how to create web applications from scratch. So it has been an amazing journey, and I've enjoyed being yeah. here and doing what you're doing. Yes. I mean, just looking at you talk about your work, your eyes were literally twinkling and sparkling. Yeah. You know, when you hear people talk about a twinkle in the eye, I was looking at it here. I wish I could frame it <laughs> and send it to you, but yeah. you know, you can always revisit this conversation and you will see it. Okay. But when you talk about women and youth, because for you, that's a huge passion. Yeah. You're part of the demographic that's the most marginalized, not only in real life, yeah but also online as well. When we look for presence of women, strong, powerful women who are using the digital plane, who are innovating and who are making use of this space in the way that it should, mm -hmm. you begin to struggle to find yeah. numbers. Yeah. What's going on there and why is that? Okay, I think the problem uh, probably is we don't have uh, enough mentors in the tech space who are going to encourage the girls. But over the last five years, we have seen initiatives such as Digitize Her come up, mentor girls, those who are in high school also, and also those who are in universities, where we equip them with skills to just uh, be able to keep up with the technology. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, what we need to do is uh, look at the girls when they're in high school, where they have not started uh, thinking about which careers they are going to take. Tell them that sciences are not hard, it's not a man's world, mm -hmm. but to look at the women who have gone ahead in the industry and have made it and share these stories with them. And when we talk about the digital plane, we're not just talking about socialite things. Yes, yes. We're talking about more serious things yes. where you can create applications, mm -hmm. where you can create strategies for companies, mm -hmm. where you come up with solutions yeah. for problems that all of us are facing yes. in the Kenya that we're living. In talking about digitize her, tell us a little bit about the reason <laughs> why because by the time you set up something, there's got to be a need for it. The things that you have seen and you understand what Digitize Her is going to come and do. Okay. So what birthed 
digitize her? Uh, digitize her. Uh, I cooperate with my director, who is an amazing woman from Safaricom Women in Tech. She's a technology strategist in Safaricom, and she's very passionate about mentorship, and she was looking for someone who is passionate like her to work with. So she, she looked at the... At the market, there was a huge skill gap. Yes, we are talking and we are saying that we don't have enough women in technology, but what exactly are we doing about it? Mm -hmm. So that's when we come in and we equip this, these women with skills to just survive in this technology space. Right now, everything is evolving digitally right. and uh, digital is going in every sector. It doesn't matter whether you're in law or whether you're in whatever career, you need the digital skills. So. Looking at this uh, market and seeing there's a huge skills gap, and especially in, when it comes to discrimination in women, how are we equipping them? So that's how the digitizer was born. We operate in three major counties. That is Nakuru, Mombasa, and Nairobi at the American Spaces. In looking at what you do, equipping girls and mm -hmm. talking to them in all these different locations that you've yeah. talked about, mm -hmm. there must be some common barriers that you see, that you experience when you come face to face with these girls. Mm -hmm. You know how we've got frequently asked questions? Yes. There must be some frequently seen barriers. Yes. What are these things that you see in our young ladies? And you know the future is theirs, but what are these things that you're seeing? I think it's the, it's the thinking that science is male dominated and then we lack the opportunities. We lack, these girls lack access to opportunities. Another thing is that, uh, we had uh, issues with women uh, equal, equal opportunities when it comes to education. Uh, women are still lagging behind. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to science courses, you know, they are key courses when it comes to computer science, science and innovation. Mm -hmm. And so if, this, if these girls are, are mentored and if we tell the stories of these women who have gone ahead of us and they have made it every, everything possible, then we are able to tell the stories and we are able to even mentor and encourage them. Mm -hmm. So looking at it, uh, it's not only equipping the skills. After equipping the skills, are we only telling the stories about women, about the challenges that women face in the tech industry? Or are we telling the stories, yes, there are challenges, but we should at least tell the success stories of these women to just motivate and inspire them. And you've opened up that box about challenges because I'm thinking your mind is never going, your body is never going to go where your mind has not yeah. envisioned or imagined. And you mentioned challenges. Yeah. And there are challenges for women in tech. Mm -hmm. And you're a woman in tech. So what are some of those challenges that you face? Uh, I think the challenges you, you face is maybe discrimination. Mm -hmm. uh, when maybe you're not in a culture where, a company where the culture is accepting that you know something in technology right. and maybe you ask a man something, maybe you're coding something and um, a, a, a fellow counterpart who is a male doesn't feel like you're worth asking questions mm -hmm. or when you go to ask them something, they're like, I don't think you're fit in this. So there's also that concept that needs to be changed, but I know we'll change it over time. Okay. Yeah. Knowledge share, you know, it, it takes me back to this really old saying that, you know, if you light someone's candle with yeah. your candle, your candle isn't going to go off. Yeah, You're not true. going to lose the light in your candle just yeah. because you lit another mm -hmm. one. And when it comes to knowledge share, the people, and I don't think it's just men only, I think it's a yeah. human nature thing. Some yeah. people are very quick to share, mm -hmm. and then there are others who would really rather just not even give you mm. a tiny little piece yeah. of any information that will help. And that is a true challenge. Yeah, true. And, and I hope we can all overcome our little you know, ideas yes. of what is and what isn't so that we can power this nation forward. But in looking at what you do with Digitize Her, mm -hmm. you're very passionate about one big word, strategy. Yes. There has to be a reason behind what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Digitize Her is going somewhere. Mm -hmm. And you cannot just show up and say, I'm going to be digital without a strategy. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to advise us on because, you know, in talking to you, I'm also learning myself. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of us who are trying out and growing in different platforms and in different spheres. Mm -hmm. I'm coming from traditional media to mm -hmm. new media. Mm -hmm. So when you think about strategy, what would be your advice for people on this plane? I think uh, when it comes to digital, everybody will be involved. And first of all, we need to bridge that gender, the digital gender gap, mm -hmm. so that we have even more women leaders 
who are in this digital space. When policies are made, yeah. when government makes policies, mm -hmm. it makes sure that they are not inheritably biased towards a certain gender. Uh, I always say that the moment we'll stop talking about female leaders, female developers, and instead start saying these are leaders, these are developers, then we'll know we are going somewhere and we know we'll have bridged the gender gap in every sector. Mm -hmm. In putting gender on the table, I can't help but think about lobbying because we still have a long way to go mm -hmm. as women, as youth, as minorities. In, in, in different fields, there's still a long way to go. Mm -hmm. And you cannot look at change without thinking about lobbying. Yes. And in looking at the structures of Digitize Her, is lobbying one of the things that you do? What we do at Digitizer, mm -hmm. we look at the girls who are between the age of 18 and that years. Right. We advertise it in our social media platforms. We mm -hmm. go through the applications and then uh, we enroll you into the program. Once you're in the program, we equip you with skills. Yeah. Uh, things we teach there is a web design, how to create content and good content. Mm -hmm. We also equip them or introduce them to entrepreneurial skills and how you can leverage on the media, on the platforms that are there yeah. so that you can advertise your business. Is it a first come first served basis and how long do these you know training sessions it's last? It's a two weeks program. Right. Uh, you don't have to have the knowledge of tech, technical know-how. Yeah. We'll come in, we'll teach you. So what would I need? It's first come first served? Or no, not do you look come, at our first. business plans and what we want to do with it? Um, How do you go about choosing uh, who to when, work with? When we're choosing, we look at your passion, right. what you're passionate about, and how we use this, the skills afterwards. Mm -hmm. That is the key thing. How will you use the skills? Are you ready to even share it to other people? So that, uh, you know, one thing we do in women in technology and digitizer specifically, we, cre we don't only impact the skills, we also connect you to opportunities. Right. And while at it, we, we, we create a pool of tech women. So you, I pull you, you pull someone up. Mm -hmm. So we create a pool and we move ahead forward. Fantastic. Each one lift one. Yes. Or each one teach one. Yes. Each one reach one. And I could do this all night, mm -hmm. but I'm going to wind up this conversation by saying thank you so much for making the time to be here. I know you're on social media yes. and Digitize Her is also on social, yes. social media. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're going to allow us to share those contacts yes. and of course your media, social media handles. I'm going to put them on all my social media mm -hmm. so we can open the doors and lift women who need yes. to go yes. places. Thank you. thank you so much for making the time to be here and thank you for watching this episode. As always, if you haven't already, please subscribe, drop us a comment. If you're watching this now, that means you've seen this video all the way to the end. Tell us something and share this video with somebody who needs to get in the running and to change the future of Kenya. And it's not just uh, women, even men. Yes. If you're a man and you've watched this to this point, it's okay. Do you and do the best version of you. Hit notifications as well and uh, you never get to miss an episode every Monday when we upload. We've been living out loud at the waterfront, Karen, a world-class destination for retail and lifestyle. This is the place to be. If you're setting up shop, expanding your business, or you just want to have fun, come, 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 come. This is the place. Until next week, we catch up on an all new episode of season six on Sheila Lives Out Loud. Take care and be good and live out loud. Bye.